Are you ready for our next verse in the book of Ruth? Today it's Ruth 1 9. See if you can pronounce the Hebrew here. Here's how I would pronounce it Yatain Yahweh Lakem Umatzana, uh, so, sorry, Umatzana, 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 Manu Ka Isha Bait Isha. Boy, that was rough. All right, you know, I've been doing Hebrew for, what, 30 years, and I still, it just, it's the zigzag, zigzag. Anyway, um, my old professor, Lawson Stone, used to say that he could he could tell by how how easily you pronounced Hebrew. I don't know. I, I man, man. Anyway, so Yatain, what, what do we recognize of this? Well, I recognize the name of God, Adonai, uh, or Yahweh. Um, Lakem. La means to, kem is them. Now, again, this is a masculine form. I would have wanted la ken because he's talking, not because of ken. I mean, ken's, I mean, I, I wanted to be ken because I'm ken, but ken is the third feminine uh, plural uh, to them because, right, uh, Naomi is talking to Ruth uh, and her other daughter in law, and so it should be la ken. Anyway, male bias even trumps actual gender here, it seems. Feel free to tell me differently if you know better. So this is to them. Uh, Yahweh gave to them. Oh, may Yahweh. Okay, I'll come back to that. Okay, so U is uh, in front of a bump letter. Uh, so it is and. Uh, and it's gone to Shrook because of the mem. Menuka um, is just a vocabulary word, a home. Uh, Isha is, is wife or woman. Bait is house. Uh, looks like it's in construct because by it would be the absolute form. Bait would be the construct form. So house of. Ha there, uh, or it's not ha, it's ah. Uh, I recognize the hey as a third feminine possessive. Her, her ish, her man. In the house of her man. House of her husband. Okay, so we've done we've done our... What looks familiar here? Now let's let's go into more detail. So what is yatain? So the yod here. So we don't have enough letters, and unless it's a unless it's a verb yatan, uh, we don't have enough letters. And uh, I do know a natan. We've seen a natan, Nathan, which means to give. The yod here is a uh, preformative. It's an. Uh, let's start off by calling it an imperfect performative third masculine singular. The, the masculine here is Yahweh. Um, now, uh, so this is Natan, and the Nun assimilates when no vowel separates. The Nun has been sucked into the tet, and it became a double tet. Um, however, I think the context suggests, because Naomi is, as it were, blessing her two daughter-in-laws, I'm going to guess that this is not an imperfect, but a jussive which is, in many cases, looks the same. So how would, how would that change the translation? Well, it would be may or let Yahweh give, or uh, let Yahweh give or may Yahweh give. Um, so third masculine singular. So this is a, a call or G-stem, uh, third masculine singular uh, jussive from Natan. May Yahweh give to y'all, we already talked about that. And y'all find rest. Now, that's not good English, but it's it's fine Hebrew. And so we would translate it something like, may the Lord give you and may you find rest. Something along those lines. Um, now, Mazena is weird. Uh, well, it's not weird, but uh, hold on to, the, to your hats here. So the na here is weird. I would have expected a a hey. So it is. It seems to be written a little defectively. So it should be, uh, you know, tiktolna, a third feminine plural. Um, so if you think of the imperfect third feminine plural being tiktolna, we're missing the tav on the front. So when... When do you chop off the performative of a verb and then just get the rest? Well, you do that in the imperative. So this is a, I believe, 
a call or G, a third feminine plural imperative from matza to find. So u uh, and the accent in tiktolna is, I think, before the final syllable. So I think it's u um, So it is third feminine plural. Y'all find rest, uh, you women, you two women. Okay, so we have a justive here. This is a fun verse, grammatically. We've got a justive here, and we've got an imperative here. May the Lord give to y'all and find rest. Um, it's a mixture of, of different forms, because this is a justive in the imperfect formation, as it were, and then this is a imperative uh, normal. Um, but they both have the same meaning, right? They're both commands, as it were, but or wishes of, of blessing. So may the Lord give to you and may you find rest. And then we saw Isha can mean each in a distributive kind of context like this. You got some rest and you've got some rest. Uh, each in the house of her husband. I think there might be a hidden bet that's coalesced here. Uh, rest each in the house of her husband. And he, and Ruth is basically saying you should remarry um, because you can't get a job at Meyer. So um, I think there probably is a hidden bet that's coalesced into the bet of buy it. So may the Lord give to y'all and may you find rest each in the house of her husband. Now see if you can pronounce this, the next line of, of one nine. Vatishak lahen u Misa, misena, ooh, I'm sorry, I messed that one up totally. Vatisena, vatisena, kolat, kolan. Man, I'm having trouble today. Utiv kena. There's ken. Ken's there. All right, so what do we recognize? Vav patak doubling. This is a converted imperfect. Vav patak doubling. This is a converted imperfect. Vav patak doubling. This is a converted imperfect. Um, so, um, the Tav, therefore, is a performative. This is a, a third, I'm sorry, um, uh, hold on a second. Okay, this is a third feminine singular, uh, referring to Naomi, and she kissed, uh, to them. Now, here we finally have the, the hen. Uh, la hen. Um, this should have been la ken, and here we have la hen. We've got the new final, finally here. Uh, this is second person. This is third person. So, and she kissed. So, this is a uh, nashak. It's a first nun. Nun assimilates when no vowel separates. The nun has been sucked into the sheen. Um, so, this is a third feminine singular. Uh, call converted imperfect from Nashak. Um, and she kissed them. She didn't kiss to them. I, I assume this is a real kiss. It's just an idiomatic, you know, to kiss to someone. Uh, and then they, so here we have the Tav again. So it's still third feminine, but the Na on the end, it's third feminine plural. This is third feminine singular. And then these two are third feminine plural. Um, this is also a first nun. Boy, we've got a lot of assimilation going on here. Um, so the nasa, the nun, assimilates when no vowel separates, sucked into the scene. This is a sheen. This is a scene. Dots on a different fork. Um, and they lifted up, Nassau, they lifted up. Um, this is a call, converted imperfect, uh, third feminine plural from nasa. They lifted up their voice. Here we have the new, thank you for giving us a third feminine plural uh, pronom uh, possessive suffix. Uh, you know, it's nice when you go with the actual gender we're talking about here. Their voice. And they lifted up their voice, their coal, and they wept. So this is, um, I believe, uh, baka, to cry or to weep. And it is, again, a call, converted and perfect, third feminine plural from baka. Um, it's a third hey, and, and when you put these supformatives on them, sometimes the original third yod comes back. Third hey, the hey is hiding uh, a third yod in some cases. 
Okay, well, that felt rough. I hope you didn't experience it as rough. It, the translation of the whole thing is, and may Yahweh give to y'all um, and find rest, each in the house of her man, her husband, and Naomi kissed them, and they lifted up their voice, and they wept. Ruth 1.9.